with Patrick Bailey. He's an aviation attorney and flight instructor who's been watching the dramatic changes in security at flight schools. You can understand why, since that's the one thing they've been able to trace, is the connection between flight schools and those pilots who apparently uh, plunged the, their aircraft into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Sure, that's understandable, Jess, because there's not a lot of control over uh, flight training and, and civil aviation in that respect as we know it. Uh, today, the regulations are much, much more restrictive, even training right today. For example, in their VFR conditions, uh, which is visual flight, visual flight rules, uh, flight training can't be in a turbojet aircraft, can't be in an aircraft that weighs more than 12,500 pounds, and over metropolitan areas like LAX or San Francisco, it's got to be less than 6,000 pounds and must be a piston aircraft. So basically small aircraft. Only. Absolutely. Are, are, are these rulings unfair? I don't think in the wake of what's happened we can call any of it unfair. If we're erring to the side of caution, I think we need to do that now, and then step by step bring back the control as, as we deem it safe. So these flight schools that are experiencing really severe financial damage, you're just saying it's just simply necessary for the time being? Well, I, I hate to say suck it up, but kind of in a way that's, mm -hmm. that's really what's happening. Because in counterbalance, uh, trying to maintain a level of security, as well as trying to keep the, the financial world of aviation going, I think that we're looking at that being a reality, at least for a while. But I think what some of these flight schools are saying is we're willing to comply and we're willing to do what's necessary to make our nation more secure. But how could you have anticipated something like this? How could you have foreseen this? And one even brought up a really good example. The last time the World Trade Center was attacked, it was a truck bomb. I mean, someone actually drove a vehicle into it. Does that mean everyone does not get to go to the DMV and get a driver's license any longer? Mm -hmm. So it's a real difficult thing to deal with. You can't anticipate the use in this fashion. Are they persuaded that these restrictions are temporary? I don't know. I mean, that may be a better question for Mr. Bailey, whether or not this would be temporary or permanent. But I would think that probably we'll see some permanence here. Gay, they've been evolving over the last 10 days where uh, it's becoming less and less restrictive. So we're seeing an evolution in that security regulation right now. How far that will continue, we don't know. Mr. Bailey, you've been witnessing another very, perhaps, predictable trend, and that is a huge flux of people moving away from commercial flight altogether, and if they can afford it, going on private planes. Absolutely, Val. The uh, charter industry has just, I mean, exploded in the last 10 days, and it was already a significant industry. When you consider that there are 14,000, over 14,000 business aircraft operating moving business travelers day to day, uh, the charter industry is just booked across the board right now. now. This used to be just a corporate perk, the corporate jet, but it's something else now. You bet. It used to be considered a perk, and then it became known as a tool, and I think it's safe to say that it's a necessity today. Wow. So even if security does increase at airports, we're going to be seeing a lot of people not wanting to deal with that security, and if they can afford it, going to private. Oh, oh no, no doubt about it. E even the fractional ownership fleet. Which, which is, is when you share ownership? Exactly, akin to a time sharing. If you added up all those airplanes, which are slightly over 4,000, you have the world's sixth largest airline just in fractional operators. Wow, that's amazing. Big business. Patrick Bailey, pilot and attorney, thank you so much, Gagey. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Val. Coming up tomorrow.